Okay, so I was talking about mantras and remedial measures for the planets. And <clears throat> you know, mantras are really just one of the of the many options. And mantras will typically be something that works better for you if you have a good Mercury and Jupiter connections in your chart or just if both of those are good and if the fifth house is good in your chart if all three are good then you'll do really well with mantra therapy and you might even want to get that book mantra yoga and primal sound by David Frawley or just I don't know just know that that's a good therapy for you um, but it does kind of depend on the planets in your chart that are strongest just just at birth and then in the various Vargas and in particular the, the Rashi and then the D30 Varga. So if you see a planet, say someone has a really strong Saturn in both of those Vargas, then Saturn is a planet that deals with fasting. And so then that person can really benefit from fasting more than the average person. I don't even care what, what Ayurveda says, if they're Vada or Pitta or Kappa, it just doesn't matter as much. Um, and so that's the thing is like you'll hear some people who fast and they just don't do well from it and then other people fast and they do really really well from it and so check that Saturn and you might understand why <clears throat> uh, other people you know if you have a strong Venus you'll do really well with massage therapy if you have a really afflicted Venus you'll never even want to get a massage it's really strange even though a massage is like really enjoyable you'll like refuse to ever let yourself get a massage it's really funny um, you'll be too busy or this or that or you just won't feel like it's not comfortable to you so you won't get it um, so of course you won't benefit or even if you get it you probably will be tense and unable to relax you know or so that's the thing is so when you're gonna give people um, advice on upayas and remedial measures <clears throat> and like ways of just working with their karma you need to look at their chart as you're doing that and not just tell them like some advice like just some generic Ayurveda advice like go to bed before 10 p.m. or 11 or whatever well, that's always good advice you know it's, it's gonna be good so I'm not saying don't tell them that yeah that's good advice but when it comes to like narrowing down and trying to work with like acute issues um, for example, like homeopathy is just a system that has given profound benefits to some people, but then others don't seem to benefit from it. And if the sun is really robust and strong, then the person will do really well from homeopathy. And homeopathy is based on like, you know, taking that same thing, home, homeo, same, that hurt you and then going back into it and like not running from it, you know what I mean? And facing it and confronting it and that's deals with the sun you know like confrontation like like the lion and being bold you know what i mean and the sun also deals with our immune system as well as saturn but sun rep has a lot to do with our immune system and you know the homeopathic remedies are kind of based on like you know working with your immune system and say you're having trouble sleeping they might suggest giving you tiny amount of like coffee or crude or something like that this tiny amount of coffee actually like a part per million where it just it's not like you're actually metabolizing anything really but your cells and just the energy of the coffee hits your system and then you naturally re your own immune system rebalances itself and decides to make itself sleepy and releases its own sleepy chemicals that's at least one explanation i've been told you know i'm really not a i'm not the authority on homeopathy but it's basically like a, a natural way to to work with your own immune system some on some levels there's a lot to it um, but if, if someone has a robust sun in their chart, then they, they would do really well with that as a, as a therapy, you know, and going through that. Um, but then say the moon, you know, the moon is, say the sun's really weak and the moon's not as strong, then uh, they sometimes don't actually benefit as much from homeopathy and they benefit a little bit more from like the opposite like getting out of those confrontation those tough scenarios and getting into good environments because the moon's all about environments and um, you know like being in one having a home in a certain environment by water or by the elements can totally change your health compared to have living in a city or something you know what I mean and so so the moon can have a lot to do with um, 
paying attention to your environments, the company you keep, and those th those things, and just like the, your daily habits. So if the moon's really strong, you can try to like coach them more on their habits and their day to day lifestyle, and then also um, like. Uh, using one of the things that I notice really commonly for the moon is um, the creative imagination like using things like the law of attraction the secret all these books that Oprah goes and like talks about you know these books that show up on like Oprah's talk shows and all these talk shows that you know predominantly women watch and why does it work for them and then men try it doesn't work um, that that ability to manifest and attract what you need and that prosperity which is what the law of attraction those books are about is is related to the moon and also dream work you know like doing dream work would relate to the moon and then plant therapy um, I'm really big on plant therapy myself and uh, growing gardening that's all very good for the moon um, and just like a good remedy in general um, gardening is a good remedy for Jupiter also if I forget to mention that um, so yeah like uh, when the moon is strong in a chart one can do well oh also journaling that can be a great remedy for the moon um, and uh, um, and also like musical you know music is more therapeutic oftentimes to people with a strong moon um, if you have a strong Mars then you can do really well with um, using your willpower just like using willpower as a remedy that's that's a remedy Sri Yukteswar mentioned that as one of the main remedies for overcoming your karma you can also use gemstones because gemstones are the mineral wealth of the earth and Mars actually rules like getting wealth out of the earth and Mars rules gemstones actually and minerals um, over over and across the board um, of course different minerals will be ruled by different planets and such but you can use mineral therapy gemstone therapy therapy with metals in general um, like even like wearing copper you know or wearing those wearing bangles that yogis would wear and things like that are very good for Mars um, oh um, like uh, using like bitter herbs and herbal therapy um, and then uh, martial arts Qigong things like that Hatha yoga oh yeah that's also one for the Sun Hatha yoga um, and acupuncture you can benefit a lot from acupuncture and also surgery you know if you need surgery Mars is the surgeon so that can be a necessary remedy um, Mercury is the planet of mantra so he's really like I said if you got a strong Mercury you can rely on mantra therapy and then say you got a strong Mercury but then that's not the, the planet there's a lizard right there um, that's not the planet you say you need you have a weak Venus so using your strong mer Mercury you do mantras to Lakshmi to Venus you know and so that's kind of how you can work with this therapeutically um, and then along with the uh, the mantra thing is um, of course like um, how do I put this uh, like learning Ayurveda, learning health systems, like learning like system systematic ways of maintaining your health. Like so, learning Ayurveda can be very good for someone if they have a strong Mercury as a remedy, because then then they learn Ayurveda and then they learn all these remedial ways to take care of all these other things. Um, so again, like if you have a strong Mercury, but then um, another planet's weak, you can use that strong Mercury to. Um, to learn in Ayurveda what you need to do to help the other planet, you know? Um, so yeah, mantra therapy, Ayurveda, um, I feel like there's one I'm forgetting right now, but I don't know. Um, Jupiter, with Jupiter, you will find that meditation and pranayama is a really great remedy. You'll find that charity and donating and giving away things and giving away money particularly is a very good remedy for Jupiter and will always usually attract you more wealth and that's also maybe in a sense true with the moon too since the, like I was saying the moon has to do with prosperity um, you know if Jupiter's strong in your chart you can just go get readings you know like it means that the guru the counselor is good for you so seeing gurus um, learning from gurus uh, 
you know, getting readings, getting counseling, these things work like really, really well for people when they have a strong Jupiter. So you can go and get a reading and then the counselor, the awake Jupiter, will tell you what else you have to do, what things to do to fix the other planets that are more afflicted in your chart. Um, and then, you know, yeah, if you have a strong Jupiter, you can garden. You can get into gardening, uh, working with seeds. You can get into working with children. Um, you can get into, uh, oh, sound, sound therapies. Uh, kind of like, a, again, there's an overlap with the moon there, like how I was saying moon uh, and music, you know, music helps them. Well, I think that might also be true for Jupiter, or perhaps it's just sound therapies. Um, or we might say, like, spiritual chanting um kirtans and things like that could be very good for jupiter um and then like prayer is actually like such an amazing remedy and prayer works really really well if you've got a good jupiter I'm not saying don't pray if you don't because that's how you get a good jupiter is by praying and, and if you did that a lot in past lives then you you know will um you probably have a good jupiter in this life um and then uh Uh, pilgrimages, you know, you can benefit from pilgrimages. If there's, uh, if you have Venus strong in your chart, like I said, massage, but then also, um, being really respectful to women and to the opposite sex is really important. And then you can do color therapies as well if you're, if you have a, you know, a strong Venus. Um, and you can also get readings and get good worldly advice from people, so also getting readings can be really helpful. Um, and, uh, like, rejuvenative therapies in general do really well so for someone who has Venus, like Panchakarma or, like, therapies that, uh, diet, raw food, dietary therapies that rejuvenate the body because Venus is a planet of Virya. So if you have a strong Venus, especially in the D1 and D30, then you can rejuvenate quickly from health. Let's just put it that way. So most rejuvenative therapies are going to work well for you. Um, Saturn, like I said, fasting is that main one. And then service, you know, serving others and then serving uh, like the homeless and the impoverished and the destitute and the people who are at the lowest level of society, uh, not ignoring them, you know, and working with them and doing karma yoga is essentially one of the big things for Saturn. Jupiter is also known for karma yoga. Um, and so if you have a strong Saturn, Saturn, you can do any kind of fasting. Like I said, it doesn't have to be food. You can be fasting from being around that person or fasting from negative thoughts about myself or whatever, you know? Um, and basically like karma yoga and services of all sorts are really good if you have a strong Saturn. And Rahu, if you have a strong Rahu, then your charts essentially saying like you're gonna you're gonna have a chaotic life but through that chaos you're gonna grow a lot and so if you have a strong Rahu just kind of like embracing your fate and your life for what it is and not trying to change it with remedies is actually like one of the best remedies in this weird contradictory sort of way um, but if you have a strong Rahu, you can. we can also say that you can do really well with like hypnotism, actually. It's really interesting. Like um, Some people can benefit a lot from hypnotism, but I can't really say that it's... I'm not 100% advocating it because from a yogic standpoint, it's sort of counter to yoga because... Uh, and again, like I know... I, th I think hypnotism has a great validity, and that's why I'm mentioning it. For a strong Rahu, there is, there is a a great potential for healing and help with hypnotism but hypnotism is essentially trying to like reprogram parts of your unconscious but if you're a yogi you're essentially saying I know I'm not my unconscious I know I'm pure spirit so just try to keep going beyond that so if you're in a yoga path just keep affirming yourself as pure consciousness spirit paramatma whatever your your term is for it but don't um and don't try to like condition different layers of your subconscious just get beyond all of that you know what I mean? so rahu uh can also give you you know the potential to get benefit from hypnotism or like very new like 
really technological, like innovative, um, at the forefront of science and modern medicine type of therapies. So some of the only people that I do notice benefiting from Western allopathy or like modern mainstream medical practices are people who have a really robust Rahu um, and not that great of a K2. Um, oh, and then if Rahu is strong, you can also benefit from Yagyas and rituals and Pujas and things like that. And then if K2 is strong, you can also benefit from Yagyas as well. Um, if K2 is strong though, like you're usually a spiritual sense of surrender is, in, is important and usually like spirituality and yoga is a very big remedy, but um, it's kind of like a... Hmm. Well, let's just say that well, with, when K2 is strong, um, spirituality is a remedy and then also Jyotish and astrology and like esoteric stuff and like kind of like occult stuff. Really, I think the best remedy for K2 is to kind of leave it alone and do the Rahu thing. So with K2, this is a little bit trickier, but we can definitely say with a strong K2, one tends to benefit from really spiritual practices. Um, they have usually a strong past life karma to something, so it's a little bit trickier, whatever that thing is, they could benefit from a lot, but then be very frustrated with it. So I guess maybe like how K2 is a mixed cast planet, this is just kind of one that's not as easy and clear to explain, but I would say that you know, just focus on the Rahu thing, ultimately. Um, the best, some of the best things to do with K2 is just leave our K2 alone. Um, I also think some of the best advice I've ever been given about K2, like, in my life and other people's life is to try to see your K2 as, like, a, just a manifestation of God's will and be surrendered to that. Like, I'll get what I meant to get from that because we always feel like we need more from that area of K2's chart. So just kind of surrendering that area to God's will is one of the best remedies for K2. Um... All right, so I can, so the, the, these are, to be clear, like these, I'm trying to talk about types of therapy you can do based on a planet that's strong. So if any of the plants I just mentioned are strong, say you've got an exalted Mars, then you can benefit from surgery, willpower, all the things I mentioned for that. But you're probably not worried about what planet is strong because it's strong. So the plants that are weak are what need help. So I can, in another video, I will talk at more at length about therapies that help each planet, you know? And so, uh, so like I said, if Jupiter is strong, gardening is a great therapy for you. But then say you, your Venus is not strong. That's what you want strengthened. You can garden flowers, you know, because Venus rules flowers. So you can be a flower gardener, you know what I mean? Whereas another person who's like, well, Jupiter's strong, but I want it to be even stronger, then they should just garden fruit trees, you know what I mean? Because it's like Jupiter, Jupiter. Um, so then, or say you want your Mercury stronger, you would grow lettuce, and because lettuce is ruled by Mercury. Or you would grow like, um, you know, carrots, another, another thing ruled by Mercury, you know? Um, Okay, so I'll do another video where I go in more in-depth on remedies, too. All right, take care, you guys.